cows happily grazing on green grass is an image that Ireland is renowned for. But lurking between the blades of grass is a dangerous threat, a deadly parasite hidden and ready to attack. Its victim are cattle and sheep. The liver flu costs Irish farmers up to 90 million euro a year. Liver fluke are essentially what we call an endoparasite. So they're a parasite that exists inside the body. Now, some of these parasites don't do damage, but unfortunately, liver fluke can do quite extensive damage. In the bowel, the larvae penetrate the intestinal wall and move to the liver, where they spend eight to 12 weeks living on blood and tissue and causing significant liver damage. As the larvae mature, they travel to the bile ducts, where in the absence of treatment, they can grow up to four centimetres in length and also reproduce. So once two liver fluke mate inside the liver, they will produce eggs and the bile duct goes into the gallbladder, which feeds into the intestine, and that obviously passes through the digestive system of the animal, straight back out on the grass again. You can actually get a cow releasing up to 20,000 eggs onto pasture on a particular day. Wow. So you can see this is a lot of eggs. Back on the grass, the liver fluke larvae require a secondary host to complete the cycle. The larvae penetrate their way into a mud snail, where they mature and multiply, resulting in up to 1,000 encapsulated larvae being released from each snail. They lie hidden on the grass, ready for the cycle to begin again. Rena, this is an enormous liver. It is fairly big. This would be a fairly typical what you get uh, out of a cow. It's not too bad looking for post-mortem changes on this side, but it is... Can I help you turn it over? No. So we're going to beautiful. Do this this is, is beautiful. Stunning stuff <laughs> all together. The tissue that the immature liver fluke go through, that's this brown part. Right. So they actually burrow through this and they're feeding on tissue and on blood as they move. As you remember, I said that um, the bile ducts is where the adult liver fluke can stay and... Make 20,000 babies a day. That's I remember it. that bit. <laughs> so you get these thickened vessels, which would suggest that there has been some inflammation and internal damage done to the liver. This sort of place you can actually literally squeeze and they'll pop out, oh. which is where these ones would have come from. They're big. I suppose they would be a, a typical enough adult fluke. Now, again, these are nice and white and clean looking because they're in formalin to preserve them. Yeah. So when they come out of one of these little holes, they're yes. all bloody and mangled. They, they, they tend to be covered in bile and green looking. And yeah, they're, they're not they're the like, most And pleasant. that's going in the bin, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> Due to our wet, temperate climate, Irish farms are at a higher risk of liver fluke than most other countries worldwide. But even on our drier farms, the parasite can be a problem. We automatically assume that we did not have liver fluke in our farm, we were a dry farm. You know, we just assumed it wasn't here. And like, we became complacent. It started in 2010. We had um, 40 cows came in sick one morning. Uh, that was about 30% of our herd. It had a huge effect, you know, on the, the yield of the herd. The mating season had started and, you know, it had a knock-on effect uh, for a two to three week period within the herd as well. You know, it's very hard to put an actual financial figure on it, but we reckon it's between 30 and 40,000 euros it cost us, you know, throughout the year. We put a herd health plan in place, um, I suppose in conjunction with our vet. You know, we sat down with them, realised what the problems uh, were within the herd, and, uh, you know, wrote down paper where we needed to go for the next 12 months. So that experience completely turned you around, went from being a little bit complacent to now being a total expert. Absolutely, like based on everything uh, that, that, that I learned here, that happened here and that I put in place here, I decided to do the Newfield Scholarship, which allowed me to travel for, I suppose, about two months of the year, you know, around the world, research animal health in an expanding dairy industry. As a country, we're on about uh, expanding the dairy herd by 50% in the next five to 10 years. And I can see, you know, if people are not on top of the game as, re uh, as regards animal health, it will go on to cost them thousands. It could put certain people out of business. There's no two ways about that. And what's the problem with the current strategies of treating liver fluke? What we have at the moment is that we will actually go into whole herds and whole flocks and actually blanket treat every animal in those herds and flocks with an antihelminthic. If an animal is performing satisfactorily, gaining the weight they should do, you know, on a normal basis. They're probably fine. Yes, they're probably fine. And why 
put a dose into them that you could, in, you know, increase the chances of a developing anthelmintic resistance. Yeah, because that's a big problem, is it resistance? It is. Yes, and, and it's becoming a bigger problem and we need to stop that getting worse. Rihanna is working with Tyndall National Institute to develop a diagnostic toolkit to allow vets and farmers to test for the presence of liver fluke on farms. So Alan, how is this diagnostic test going to work on the ground on the farm? So we'll have a little chip like this and we'll put an antibody on that chip which is specific for the disease. And the antibody will search for a biomarker that's present in the cow's um, blood. And if the biomarker is there, it's indicative of the cow having liver fluke. So in a similar way to how I might do a finger prick test to check for my glucose levels, you're kind of going to do the same with cattle. Exactly. We're going to take a bit of blood from the tail of the cow, put it on the chip and do the sensing using that very small volume of blood. So we'll have the chip in a little cartridge and the cartridge will connect up to a little reader like this. And we'll put a droplet of blood on the cartridge. It'll be pulled up onto the sensors and then this will give you a reading of whether the disease is present in that particular animal or not. Well, at the moment, what we're doing is we're building and qualifying the sensors and uh, we're about to start immobilising the antibodies on them at the moment. So we'll be developing those tests within the next 12 months and hopefully within three to four years that we'll have something that a farmer can take to market. So this is a pretty exciting project to be working on. It really is for us because it's multidisciplinary. You have the technology from Tyndall coming together with vets, coming together with farmers. We're going to develop a new technology that doesn't exist yet in the world. We're going to do it in Ireland and hopefully once we get it working, we'll be able to roll it out to the rest of the world. It's important that we as farmers uh, work together with the scientists, with the researchers, you know, get involved, you know, if there's research work to be done, get involved in that, because all this data will improve our industry. It would be so, so powerful on farm to have information. It's the basis of all decision making. Yeah, yeah. If you can make your decision on scientific evidence, at least you know that you're controlling exactly what you want to control and it's not guesswork anymore. And to be able to do it so quickly, phenomenal.